Rick Warren is considered one of the most influential voices in American life. He's a pastor, philanthropist, global strategist, and best-selling author. His signature book, The Purpose Driven Life, has sold 60 million copies, more than any other hardcover nonfiction book in U.S. history. It is now being re-released on its 10th anniversary, Pastor Warren. Good morning and great to have you here. Good morning, Nora. Glad to be here. So you talk about the purpose-driven life, yeah. one on earth am I here for. We yeah. were joking that Charlie says that to me every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you, you believe God has a purpose for me, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely, Charlie. Even you. <laughs> even you. <laughs> you do say in the book, um, it's not about you. Right. Yeah. Um, who is it about? Well, it is all, all about God and, and his plan for us. The Bible says God is love. Not that he has love, he is love. So life's really all about learning how to love. Learning how to love God, learning how to love each other. Um, you know, I'm uh, most uh, worried about the, this 20-something generation that uh, has, is right now without work. I've talked, to people, I've talked to three people on the plane who said, you know, I went to college for four years, can't get a job, and now uh, I'm told that my, my education really didn't matter that much. What's my purpose? Mm -hmm. And so I thought that, you know, that it was time to re-release this for a new generation. Uh, as you said, uh, about 20% of America read the book 10 years ago, but uh, a girl who was 12 years old is now 22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That brings me to politics beyond religion. Sure. On November 4th, before the election, you posted on Facebook, why would anyone jobless today vote to maintain the status quo mm -hmm. instead of change? Unemployment is still higher than four years ago. What are your thoughts on President Obama's re-election? It would be my question to you. Yeah. Were well, you, you know, saying to people at that time, uh, if you are jobless today, the president has failed you and you yeah. should vote against him and you should vote for a change in the presidency? Well, what, what I was saying was the old uh, 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 recovery th uh, mantra, to do the same thing over and over and over and expect different change is called insanity. We spent $2 billion on an election that nothing changed. Yeah. Same Congress, same Senate, same president. So should we expect change? I'm not that sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, the re-election of President Obama was a good thing or a bad thing, you think? Well, I don't ever get into, uh, into politics, as you know, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I've always said I'm not right wing or left wing. I'm for the whole but, bird. But evidently, according to what we've just been talking about, yeah. the pre God wanted President Obama, if he had a purpose for him, to be re-elected. Do I follow that? I mean, what's the disconnect between those two thoughts? You know what? Uh, if God has a purpose for we you, we don't you know God's this. purpose in a lot of events. I mean, uh, I was at the Notre Dame USC game. Uh, on Saturday night, I, people were praying for both sides to win. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think so, God had so, an opinion in okay, that. Okay, so God didn't care who God won. God didn't have an opinion in that. Uh, but, but God does have an opinion in terms of the purpose of your life. Well, here's what God's more interested in. God's more interested in your character than your career. Ah. Because you're not taking your career to heaven. You are taking yeah. your character. And so really, what you do is not nearly as important as who you become. And I would say God is extremely interested in who Barack Obama is becoming, or who Mitt Romney is becoming, or who you or I or, or Nora are becoming, because that's the character issue that's going to outlast our career. I've listened to people on, on television talk about a worry that we're becoming more secular. Yeah. On the other hand, yeah. you're, you're expanding. Yeah. Uh, are you worried about where we are as a society and our relationship to religion? Well, you know, one of the big reports that's been reported over and over and over, uh, nine months ago, Newsweek had it covered, the decline and fall of Christian America. Mm -hmm. In December, Newsweek declines and falls. Christianity is going to go on for another 2,000 years. So these predictions of the church's demise are highly exaggerated. Uh, kingdoms come and go. I mean, where's the Syrian empire? Where's the Nazi regime? Uh, those things come and go. One of the problems is misinterpreting of... Uh, uh, data. Uh, there was a, a result that came out that said the number of Protestants in America, I think it was a Pew study, dropped precipitously. Well, of course it is. Nobody calls themselves a Protestant anymore. Mm. No Christian. I don't know a single person who calls himself a Protestant. They, I'm an evangelical. I'm a, pro, uh, I'm a you call Catholic. Yourself? I'm an evangelical. Yeah. There are Pentecostals. There's Charismatics. But no, people don't use that term. It'd be saying, like, the number of pilgrims have dropped precipitously in America. Well, nobody calls themselves a pilgrim anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can make a question say the wrong thing. But is church, is church attendance down? Church attendance has stayed a, a level since the 1950s. It's neither higher nor lower. This week, more people will go to church on one weekend than attend all professional sporting events in one year. 
Let's put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. More people will, will go to a synagogue, a, 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 a cathedral, a temple, or a church on one weekend than go to all professional sports in an entire year. Mm -hmm. Why do you think faith is so important to so many people's uh, lives, not just in the United States, but obviously around yeah. the world, and yet religion also sometimes becomes the heart of so many problems around well, the world so in conflict? Yes, so much absolutely. Conflict. Well, there are a lot of things that are, have been done in the name of God that God would disavow, yeah. and I feel no responsibility to defend those things. Uh, what, uh, what we need not is religion, but a relationship. Mm -hmm a relationship to God. Uh, Purpose Driven Life is, is about that. It's, it's not about a religion. It's about how do I have a relationship? Uh, one day Jesus was walking down the street and somebody asked him, what's the most important thing in the Bible? He says, okay, I'm going to summarize the whole Bible in two sentences. This is it, cliff notes. Here's on the whole Bible. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, if that's you the that, vertical. You're in a good place. The vertical and the horizontal, and uh, and purpose driven life talks about how do I do both of those? Mm -hmm. How do I learn to love God with all my heart, and how do I learn to love my neighbor as myself? Uh, Speaking of love thy neighbor as thyself, um, want to talk about gay marriage, same sex marriage, civil unions. Mm -hmm. um, someone tweeted when you were coming on said, ask him about his opposition to same sex marriage. Yeah. Why do you oppose same sex marriage? Well, first let me ask you. Um, do you consider yourself to be a tolerant person? I do. Yeah. yeah. So you would, you would be respectful of people who would disagree with you no matter what. Agreed. Because mm -hmm. that's a very, very personal question. And people want to make an incendiary issue over it. Uh, I just uh, ha I have biblical views of what I think uh, marriage is about. I am fair in favor of not redefining marriage. I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not illegal. To, to have a, a gay relationship in America. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, it, it's not a big issue to me. It, let me ask you, it's interesting. Um, there's a pollster named Bill McInturf, a Republican pollster. He was John McCain's pollster. He's head of a big firm. His partner was Mitt Romney's pollster. Mm -hmm. And he has talked about there has not been one issue where there's been so much change so quickly. It was on the issue of same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Now we saw about a majority of Americans support same-sex marriage. How do you, how do you, mix those two things, which is a personal opposition that might be founded in religious faith uh -huh. based on what is public opinion that is shifting so mm -hmm. dramatically mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. How do you merge those two things? Well, I, as a pastor, I believe in both the good news that I believe Jesus is who he said he was, the Son of God, and but I also believe in the common good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are, we're in a democracy where nobody wins all the time. Okay? Mm -hmm. For instance, I happen to believe life begins at conception. But that's not the law, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, and if other people don't believe that, you're tolerant of their views. Well, and, and, and right? the, the, the point is, nobody's leaving the country. Um, uh, we have a wide spectrum in America, and we have to work for the common good. And that means uh, sometimes what I mean being co-belligerent. For instance, I don't agree with uh, everything that the National Organization of Women supports. But when they are uh, opposing abortion, I'm not abortion, but pornography that objectifies one body, I'm a co-belligerent with them. Uh -huh. So um, I don't happen to agree with everything that my uh, gay friends believe. But when they want to end AIDS, I'm a co-belligerent with them. In fact, Kay and I have given millions of dollars mm -hmm. to fight AIDS around the world, and we've worked with both gays, straights. I can work with an atheist. I can work with a Mormon. I can work with a Muslim. I can work with a Baptist, yeah. Buddhist, Jew. And, and, and that's one of the issues we have to work on is, is the work on what can we work I, But on the together. important thing, I think, is to underline what you said earlier to Nora in terms of same-sex marriage. You have to be tolerant of other people's views. You well, know, and if so if they differ with you with respect to Christianity yeah. or, the, with, or yeah. with respect to yeah. some of the things you say, you are tolerant and accepting that they came to their beliefs right. in, a, in a genuine way and have to be respected for that. The problem uh, is that tolerant has changed its meaning. Tolerant used to mean I may disagree with you completely, but I'm going to treat you with respect. That's what tolerant means. Right. Today, some people tolerant means you must approve of everything I do. Mm -hmm. That's not tolerance. That's approval. Right. There's a difference between acceptance and approval. Jesus accepted everybody, no matter who they were. He doesn't approve of everything I do, or you do, or anybody else does either. So I, you can be accepting without being approving. That's an important point. Let, let yeah. me change this to a different note, um, because in reading about you and, and having known lots of people who you consider to be good friends of yeah. yours, uh, you also went through a much publicized battle against weight. 
Yeah, I sure did. How did you, did you win that? That's hilarious. Well, I've lost 50 pounds. I've got about 40 more to go. Yeah. It's a really funny story. Uh, I was baptizing one day, and, and a, a Saddleback, we do it the old-fashioned way. We actually right. put people in the water. And on this one day, I was baptizing 876 people. Wow. Along about number 500, you, I had a, not a very spiritual thought. Yeah. I thought, we're all overweight. Yeah. <laughs> we're, and so the next Sunday, I got up, I said, uh, folks, I can't ex ask you to get in, in shape unless I do. And I said, I've only gained two or three pounds a year, but I've been your pastor 32 years. Yeah. Yeah. I need to lose 90 pounds. I brought in three doctors. We started a thing called the Daniel Plan. And in the last year, our church has lost 267,000 pounds. There's support in numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, several national organizations said, we want to study you, your, 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 your test group. You know what? Uh, kudos to you and your parishioners for thank doing you. that and being a leader in that regard. And thank you, Rick Warren, thank for being you. here. And uh, congratulations on the 10th anniversary in addition of The Purpose Driven Life. It is available now.